Hey, welcome to the process. My name is Dr. John Bush. This is lesson 159. This is for the science of fantasyfootball.com website. That's uh, my site and my partner, D. Mike. Uh, so we're continuing. I think you need to go back to lesson, is it 155? I think the first one. I have a lot more uh, information about what I present, the different formats, uh, looking at the strength of schedule and defense against the position. So suggest you go there if you haven't already, because I'm going to get a little jaunty here in uh, my movement through. I uh, will have the figures in the article that would have the link to this uh, discussion. <coughs> Pardon me. Las Vegas, Chargers, Rams, Miami. Here we go. Uh, team week segment, home away opponent, offensive type, DAPS, RB, QB, WR, TE, kicker, and defense. So right away, I do not want the Raiders defense for streaming probably for the whole year. Okay, let somebody else have those. The Raiders have five very hard games. 2, 4, 8, 11, 15. And they have three really easy games, week 7, 9, and 12. So coming out of their bye on week 6, first three weeks out, they have easy, tough, easy. So that, that might get them well. Uh, as far as the RBs, uh, really four tough tough games going into the bye. Only week one is fairly easy. Carr has uh, kind of up or down schedule. Only one uh, easy in the playoffs, week 17. Wide receivers, Renfro, whatnot, has uh, some early season ump, but boy, it starts playing out quick about week 10. Uh, Waller is going to earn his biscuits weeks two, three, four, five. And then in the playoffs, he's, uh, wow, I think uh, he's, we'll see where he's at. I have not drafted a share of him at all. So um, let others take that. I'll grab other ones there uh, as well. So uh, looks a little tough here for a lot of the different players on the Raiders. Three easy, five really tough scenarios. So kind of a three to five, uh, seems like an overtly tough season. Looks like in the middle, week seven through 12, maybe even 13, you have a nice little pocket of four easy versus three hard. So that's about the best that I see the Raiders are going to get, but they're going to get whacked week 14 to 17. So it's going to be sadness for your playoffs. So just be aware. Uh, uh, it could be tough sledding if you're dependent on any of the uh, Raiders for your playoffs. Looks kind of tough to me. So I'm, I'm cautious. You can see early on, we really sink down, comes back above the average, uh, which is the purple line, hits about average, and then drops down uh, in uh, weeks 14, 15, 16, 17. It gets really lean and tough. So kind of a middle kind of bookended with really hard early and late. So it's the kind of thing where use them and then jump off the bandwagon. 
seems to me. So that's kind of how I would play my Raiders, looking at them. Uh, not anything that just attracts me to having a lot of Raiders on my redraft teams. Rams, Rams, Super Bowl champs, they have one, two, two easy, one, two, three, four, five, six tough. So for them to repeat, folks, it's going to be rough, okay? Uh, whew, uh, looks rough here to me, especially the running backs, they... What, weeks three through about 11 is lean. And then weeks 15 and 16. Got a little reprieve in week 17. Uh, Cooper Cup, though, really can shine weeks two to five and eight coming out of the bye, eight to 12. So that's the good news. You're investing in Cooper Cup and you really are going to collect. It's just about week 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, the rug gets pulled out from under you there. So I could see people limping into the playoff with Cup. So I would definitely gather some stronger or some tough pieces to play. Uh, you know, you're going to have to stick with Cup, but it would not surprise me he doesn't repeat as the top dog there. And that can really spiral out of control about week 13. So just just be aware of that. Uh, people are talking about, well, they're going to use their tight end this year. Goodness, I hope not, because about first 12 weeks, I don't want to use the tight end. Uh, I would jump on 13, 14, 15, 17. So, uh, you know, if I'm streaming, that's when I want Higby. Uh, right there, but having to wait till week 12 to take him and start using him, I think there's some other streaming tight ends to use there. Uh, the Rams' defense looks like they're going to get spanked, so one might say, hmm, that means they're going to be, you know, Stafford's going to be running for his life and passing, and I could see a lot of passing. He's already got somewhat uh, injury to the elbow kind of thing. Well, this is this schedule is not going to make it better. He's not going to get healed with this kind of schedule here, it looks like to me. So be aware. Uh, three easy, uh, six rough and tough. Look at that. First uh, 11 weeks, only two easy. So one by, so three out of 11. So eight tough, rough, tough. So uh, the Rams are going to really hopefully deliver to you by week 17, but they're going to have to earn it. So just be aware. Don't be surprised here. And if you look at the overall pattern, what I just called out, look at the pattern to about week 12, 13, or 11, it finally starts seeing some life a little bit above average. It only gets above average 12, 13, 14, and 17. That's it, folks. Whew. It's going to be tough. So we're going to see if all these uh, players can earn their keep. A lot of chop flapping going on. And Alvin Robinson, everybody's banking on him. I'm giving you a fair warning. Uh, I have not uh, probably drafted him much just because of what he did last year and really worried about uh, Stafford's arm and really worried about this schedule. So I'm very cautious on this whole situation here. But I'm probably con too conservative, so that's the uh, way I see it there. Okay, the Chargers. Eckler, let's see how he does. Looks like first uh, nine weeks, they got by week eight. Looks like uh, they get four good games, too tough. So that's not too bad. Okay, so 
first nine nine games, eight games, other than two tough ones, looks like the Chargers could get off to us a rather good start. But they get tough weeks 15, 16, and 17, so it can get a little lean. And look at uh, Eckler weeks 14, 15, 16, 17. Uh, Going to get tough. Look at that. Even week 10. So 10 through 17, Eckler only gets one easy game to get breathing, to get right. So I think he's going to be an early season wonder. And we'll see if he can stay healthy. I would definitely have handcuffed to the handcuffs here on Eckler. I would not be surprised that this schedule, uh, you know, cuts him down a little bit. You heard it here first. Uh, the passing looks good. Weeks 2, 3, 4, 9, 10, 11, maybe even 12, 13, 14. You know, not bad. So there's going to be a lots of passing. And then the tight end, people saying they're going to use the tight end more. Well, the good news, week 16 and 17, the tight end figures. In fact, weeks 13, 14, 16, 17, nice little run for the tight end. So I could see Everett kind of, you know, being part of a streaming situation early and then late. So you need somebody to team up with a streaming tight end. In weeks 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I would plan my streaming accordingly here. The defense, you want the Chargers D to about week 6. Maybe some pipes say, oh, I'll play them to week 9. Okay. Uh, but they get lean week 10, 11, 12. And in the playoffs, you probably don't want them on your team in the playoffs. So uh, definitely would draft the Chargers and may keep them for a few weeks if you can get by week two. So that could be some good news there. Chargers, woo woo. Again, looks early like the Chargers really get a go. Week, week eight's the buy. So I see a nice little setup. And really even to week 14, I just don't like the below average in the playoffs. That's sad. And if you look at the pattern, you see it's nice early, kind of breaks down a little bit below average, a little bit above, and then it stays below here, weeks 15, 16, 17. So that's where I think the wheels come off again for the Chargers, some sadness. So I guess if they can build a record, they might slip in as a, a playoff team here, but they're going to earn their biscuits right here. And the, these are the nut-cutting weeks right here, 15, 16, 17. So just be aware. If you're trading, if you're doing some things, you know, you might want some other pieces there. I know everybody's Keenan Allen and whatnot. You know, Williams, I, they should have a good run. It's just, do they deliver in the playoffs? I would be a little cautious. Finally, Miami, in this lesson here, uh, looks like they have six tough, four easy. So a little bit to the hard side, but they have a nice little play, weeks five, six, and eight. Not bad, not bad. Uh, so they could have some nice little magic. Uh, weeks 11, they go on by. Coming out, they get a nice game to recover the Houston week 12, so that's good. Uh, running backs has kind of been a committee, but they have a nice run weeks four through eight. So people are going to be happy with there. But in the playoffs, weeks 15 and 16, gets a little lean week 17. But boy, look at weeks 15 and 17 for the passing in Miami. Tua is going to be running for his life against Buffalo and New England. Rut row, and those are both away games, rut row. So uh, if I'm streaming quarterbacks, get ready to use somebody else in your playoffs. I don't know if Tua is going to bring home the bacon. That look in Gersecki, uh, that that concerns me. 
Miami, I don't want the defense week one and three. So maybe week two, eh, you could work on week eight, nine, ten, maybe week four, five. I mean, they're not somebody I'm definitely drafting, but you might, they may have a few nice weeks for you, but the playoffs, you don't want them as you're streaming defense. Tough, tough, tough. So it seems to me there's a lot of toughness and late. Look at that. Weeks 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. The defense is going to be weak and limp and flabby. And so Tua is going to be pass happy crazy. So, you know, we'll see. He'll, he will show us who he is, right? By weeks 15, 16, we'll know. Okay, for next year, we'll know what we got because he's going to earn his bacon right here. Looking at uh, the bars, the, uh, you know, a little tough early, first two, four games, too tough, too easy, and then nice little run, five to eight, nice. It's a little rough going into that bias, nine and ten, and by, and then coming out, eh, okay. But then look at 15, 16, 17, rut row. And so how does that pattern look? Tough, gets a little easy, drops tough a little bit, and then the bottom falls out in your play. Just when you need them the most, there to it goes right there. So to me, I like to have all these trends as flashcards. And I sit there and just kind of carve through them and kind of memorize them almost, uh, you know, put them on flashcards and think about things when I'm, you know, doing something, you know, chauffeuring the family around, you can pull out these and think about, kind of visualize the season a little bit. Need some flashcards. Come on now, I'm a professor. You need some learning aids, okay? Quit looking at all the damn hot takes and flim flam that's going on on Twitter. This is this is much more solid than any of the hot takes. Okay, lots of squawking and talking. So uh, uh, we'll see. Okay, and by the way, everybody's going to claim they knew everything by the end of the season, right? Remember when I said this, right? <laughs> okay, everybody's an expert. Okie dokie. Anyway, this is Dr. Bush. We're rolling on here. It's time to get real with this business. Uh, you you know, quit, quit going to these flabby takes and flabby websites, you know, with the same old crap. You know, I'm going to give you something different, okay? So come on back, the one or two that are listening. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Okay, coming back. We'll have another lesson at scienceoffantasyfootball.com. And uh, we're having lots of fun, aren't we? Woo-woo.